Donald, relax. You don't have to prove anything to me. Oh, but I will. Donald, look, just remember, never cry over anything that can't cry over you. Oh, sew it on a sampler. <laughs> look at these. I've had a history of good investments. Julio Studios? Those were Julio's combination body sculpting and hair weaving studios. <laughs> Looks like you did okay for yourself. It was a sound business deal. Oh, no, I mean these before and after hairline photos. Give me that. <laughs> and how about this? Clavon's Caviar Castle. Now, Clavon returned my investment, plus a tidy profit after only six months. Donald. What? <laughs> These hair weaving places, are they open right now? Will you forget about the hair? The point I'm making is I have a history of wise investments. I have dabbled in the stock market, in the black. I have dabbled in commodities, in the black. I even invested in genetic engineering. You did? You bet. In 25 years, I'll have a Mel Gibson of my very own. <laughs> and now invested in the Windsor. And what do I have to show for it? Squat. Exactly. <laughs> Donald, once the car is restored, it's going to be worth a fortune. <laughs> There's a better chance of making Donna Rice a star. <laughs> hey, guys. What's he doing here? This is the way you talk to me after I drive Joe all the way over here from the mechanics? I'm sorry, I just haven't been myself lately. Good, we could all use the break. Lord, haven't you ever heard of quality control? <laughs> Donald, Donald, I bring good news. It's about time. And bad news. Oh, no, I hate these. <laughs> What's the good news? He says he can fix the car. And the bad news? It'll take three months and several thousand dollars. <laughs> When I decided to go partners with you, I must have been deranged. And what's that supposed to mean? Donald, don't say anything you might regret. It means that you, you're you always looking for a deal, looking for a bargain. It's about time you realize you get what you pay for. Are you saying I'm cheap? Why, yes, I am. <laughs> what about you? When I told you the price, your eyes lit up like a Christmas tree on Fire Island. Good one, Joe. <laughs> oh, and what's that, a gay joke? Well, if it is, it would be the second one in this room. <laughs> this from a man who snorkels in wishing wells. <laughs> guys, guys, I'm sure you can discuss this like adults. Donald, let me tell you something. You're melodramatic, hysterical, and high-strung. Oh, yeah? Well, you're manipulative, egocentric, and self-serving. Look, I want this to stop right now. Why? Because I think Donald's winning. <laughs> Look, if that's the way you feel, I want that car fixed, sold, and I never want to speak to you again. Fine! Fine! That goes for me, too. Well, double my pleasure. In your dreams. <laughs> Donald, this is stupid to let a car come between two friends. Well, that concept doesn't apply because he's no longer my friend. You're acting like children. Well, he started it. So there. <laughs> I finally solved my phone problem at home. Oh, yeah? I told the girls they could only have the phone between 7 and 7.30, and that's all. And they're happy with that? You bet. At 7.30, they even give me five bucks, told me to go out and have a beer. <laughs> well, Uncle Lou, I have even better news. Cliff talked Donald into coming by the restaurant. Oh, good. I miss him so. <laughs> um, it's a chance for Joe and Donald to settle their differences, man to man. Sounds like Donnie's outnumbered. <laughs> Cliffy, can you stack these for me? Thanks. Greetings, all ye patrons of El Stiffo. <laughs> Wait, I believe I hear the lisp of the lark, do you? Joe, don't spit in my ear. <laughs> Cliff, are you ready to go to the movie? Uh, sorry, Donald, I gotta work. Maybe, uh, maybe you and Joe can go. That's a wonderful idea. Daddy, what do you say? Why, what's showing? The gladiators invade Muscle Beach? <laughs> At least when I go to the movies, I don't wear shoes on my knees and pretend I'm under 12. <laughs> I have nothing to say to him. Why not? After all, talk is cheap. 
<laughs> I still say the Windsor was a good investment. Hello, point after. Donald, don't you think you're being hard on him? Now that you mention it, no. Hey, I agree with Donnie. I wouldn't blame him if he never set foot in here again. In fact, I think we ought to make it a rule. <laughs> Would you stop? Well, I hope you're happy. What? That was my buddy, the mechanic. Let me guess. He has no idea what he's doing, so he's charging us to send him to auto school. <laughs> Donald, the Windsor has been stolen. What? Apparently, they cut through the fence and drove away during the night. Joe, do you know what this means? Yes. Our car is gone. Yes. Never to be seen again. Yes. And we have full insurance? Yes! Yes! The car is gone! The car is gone! The car is gone! The Well, it's nice to see you two behaving like adults again. Donald. Shall we call on the claims adjuster? It's a date, buddy. You got it, pal. Joe, you know I didn't mean any of those things I said about you. I know that. And I didn't mean any of those things I said about you. Of course you didn't. <laughs> you know, now that we'll have the insurance money, my buddy Death Star has this beautiful boat for sale. Really? Well, I've always wanted a beautiful boat. <laughs> a beautiful boat? 